All right, let's react to The Chosen, episode one. Uh, so just before, uh, in the preview video, I talked a little bit about uh, The Chosen and, and where it came from. Uh, a man named Dallas Jenkins is the creator of this. He's the son of uh, Jerry Jenkins, who was involved uh, in the Left Behind series. That, that series was very popular uh, back in the 90s about uh, the end times and, and really uh, dispensational theology about, uh, about the rapture and the end of all things. So that's kind of uh, his theological background. You know, knowing that, it kind of raised a few red flags going in, but, uh, but of course it, it's not enough to, to really just turn you away without uh, without looking at it and, and not giving this a fair shot. So uh, The Chosen came out about this time last year, and they did an eight consecutive night live stream. So there are eight episodes, and in that live stream, uh, Jenkins talks a little bit before, and then they play the episode, and then there's a little bit of conversation after. So the episode is kind of buried within uh, an hour and a half, an hour and 50 minute uh, live stream, but there are uh, interviews and discussions and things like this uh, before and after in case you're interested uh, in those kinds of things. I'm not going to be reacting to any of that, but it is interesting. The other thing about the, the live stream aspect of it is if you found it on YouTube, you can actually watch the chat, the live chat from that evening. And sometimes people are confused about what's going on. And, uh, and, and the people who were involved are actually there and will, and will answer questions throughout. So some of the questions I had, I actually followed along uh, with that chat. It wasn't live anymore, but followed along and had uh, some of those questions answered. Uh, it also, interestingly, this series features uh, an actor named Eric Avari. He plays Nicodemus, and he was completely retired as an actor and received this script and loved the, the character of Nicodemus and actually came out of retirement to, to play that role. So that was a great addition. Uh, he's, he's fantastic in that spot. There's also a disclaimer at the very, at the very beginning, and I, I took a, a snapshot of it so I could read it, uh, and, and this is something that I really appreciate. It, it, it films like this, whether it's a TV series or a movie, actually being honest about what it is and what it's not. So I'm going to read this disclaimer. It says, The Chosen is based on the true stories of the Gospels of Jesus Christ. Some locations and timelines have been combined or condensed. Backstories and some character, characters or dialogue have been added. This is a natural thing. Anytime you're going to take the, the text of the scriptures and, and put it to film, there are quite a few gaps that you, that you need to, uh, to fill. For instance, uh, you know, Jesus leaves, say he leaves the feeding of the 5,000 and the disciples are on the boat and Jesus goes to them. Well, you know, you may need to portray Jesus coming down from the mountain. Well, the Bible doesn't doesn't actually give you that scene. It just kind of puts Jesus there on the sea. So uh, there are some natural natural gaps that that will need that will need to be filled. Uh, some locations have been com combined. I mean, these are things that you know I can't promise I won't nitpick. But these are kind of nitpicky things. Like if something, you know, if the Bible says something happened in in Capernaum and they have it happening somewhere else around Galilee, whatever, really. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't really, uh, you know, matter uh, unless, of course, they have the crucifixion of Jesus happening, you know, somewhere in Egypt instead of <laughs> instead of Jerusalem. Then we then we may start having some problems. And it goes on. It says, however, all biblical and historical context and any artistic imagination are designed to support the truth and intention of the scriptures. Viewers are encouraged to read the Gospels. So, all right, so he's trying to support what, what the Scriptures say. Now, this will be affected by his background, by his theology, as we'll talk about in, in just a minute. But you have to appreciate that that, uh, that that kind of disclaimer is there to help us to see 
what his what his goal is that he's not just trying to invent all of these things and that there is an encouragement to to read the scriptures so uh, the episode begins with a flashback to a town called Magdala it's on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee in 2 BC and there's a little girl there and, and her father and the father winds up quoting to her she, she's scared and, and he winds up quoting to her uh, a verse from the scriptures, it's from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. Uh, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. Uh, you are mine. It's a fantastic uh, verse of the scriptures. We won't get into the context there or anything. Uh, but that's the way the episode begins. And then we begin meeting characters one by one. And with any new series, uh, characters can come at you fast. So it takes some attention uh, but but it's done you know fairly well. Uh, we're introduced to uh, Nicodemus, who is uh, teaching, and he's teaching some interesting things. You know the the content there. You know we don't have again any scriptural evidence that these are the things that Nicodemus taught. But the things that he is saying are things that, as you read the actual gospels, you'll hear Jesus kind of attack and go after later. So Nicodemus uh, is talking about, for instance, things going into your body and making you unclean. When Jesus, of course, in the Gospels says it's not what goes into your body, but what comes out that uh, that makes you unclean. So I'm, I'm wondering if, if they'll wrap back around, you know, to this later on in the, in the series. Uh, so um, Matthew then is introduced. I'll talk a little bit more about Matthew in just a little bit. And then Peter and Andrew, of course, the brothers are there. Uh, Peter is uh, is fighting. He's, he's getting knocked out. And Andrew is kind of in the background gambling on, on the fight. Uh, these two brothers are, are portrayed as very, very nervous about uh, paying their taxes and uh, paying the penalties for back taxes since they don't have any money, their fishing business is not going very well. Uh, they're afraid of losing their boat, afraid of losing uh, their house. Uh, Peter winds up cutting a deal with the Romans to sell out the merchant fishermen who are who are fishing on the Sabbath. Um, the one thing that they have done is they have uh, actually included uh, Peter's wife. They call her Eden, uh, but we do know that that Peter was was married. Uh, remember from the Gospels, Jesus healing. Peter's mother-in-law, so uh, that's a, a nice, a nice touch, a nice addition there. Uh, but certainly interesting portrayals for for Peter and Andrew. But you know, nothing you can't get get around. So as far as the content of episode one, it's very focused on Nicodemus and his uh, growing struggle with uh, not necessarily the law, not necessarily the scriptures but the tradition of the elders. Uh, the little girl from the beginning uh, is called Lilith uh, throughout the episode. Uh, she's seen constantly in, in bars uh, and her own shelter as we see her really, really struggling as being possessed by demons. Uh, Nicodemus is actually called to help her and goes and approaches her and fails at, uh, at casting out that, that demon. Uh, this Lilith is portrayed in, a, in an awful, terrible condition, even going up to the top of a mountain, uh, likely Mount Arbel, which is just above Magdala. It looks over the, uh, over the, the, the Sea of, uh, of Galilee, and she's struggling with whether or not to jump, to jump off. Okay. Uh, that is until you know you see this dove kind of fly over her and lead her away, uh, and the dove, of course, the kind of the spirit reference there, the dove will lead her into a bar, and of course it's in the bar where she meets Jesus, and uh, she runs from him, and then the episode ends with Jesus kind of walking out uh, and meeting her outside, and he calls her by her real name calls her Mary, right? This is Mary Magdalene. And he calls her by name, and then he quotes to her that Isaiah 43, verse 1, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You uh, you are mine. It's such a 
such a powerful scene just to kind of see her struggle throughout the entire episode and then and then meeting Jesus there, uh, calling her by name, which, I, again, I imagine, you know, when they film the, the scene of the resurrection, uh, I think season two is in, is in production now, but when they film the scene of the resurrection, you know, Mary there in the garden, I, I have just have a feeling that, that they're setting all of these things up. That would be a nice, a nice wraparound. Overall, uh, it's episode one is, is well done. Uh, the geography around the sea is, is spot on. You know, my eye is, is always typically looking for something to, to nitpick in, in uh, Bible movies or, or TV series. But even when uh, Peter and Andrew are on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee, they have Tiberius in the right spot. They, they, everything is, everything is, is spot on. Uh, a few things did come up, though, that caused me to question. The first is the portrayal of Matthew. Uh, it, it's an interesting portrayal. Uh, my initial thought was that because Matthew is a tax collector and he's a Jew, that he's really having this inner struggle with cleanliness since he deals with unclean things all day. But uh, apparently that's that's not Jenkins' intention, or at least that's not what he says immediately. Jenkins has said that he is portraying Matthew as autistic, or at least with Asperger's, he said. And his reasoning behind this is interesting. Now, there's nothing wrong necessarily with that portrayal. There's nothing in the scriptures that would tell us that, that Matthew was, was autistic or had Asperger's. But Jenkins' creative decision here is what kind of confuses me a little bit. He said that because Matthew is a tax collector, uh, he's a numbers guy. And he's also a facts guy. And his, his quote was, uh, the whole first chapter of his gospel is nothing but a genealogy. So that, uh, that confused me a little bit, that, his, that he decided to portray Matthew as autistic because he's a numbers guy and concerned with facts. Uh, I would really like a little more... Um, substance there. Again, not that there's anything wrong with the portrayal at all. It's certainly interesting and kind of, kind of, uh, you know, oftentimes you read, you read the scriptures and these are just characters, you know, with no real, um, you know, emotion or anything like this. They're just, you know, names on a page. So it, it, it gives you something interesting to think about, but I would like something else, uh, something else there. Secondly, I, al- I also wondered, why the focus was so involved with Mary and with uh, Nicodemus. Now, there are some things with Mary in future episodes that, that I'll get to, and uh, but, but I wondered, you know, right off the bat, why, why the focus there. Uh, Jenkins has said that, you know, hands down, without a shadow of a doubt, not that he thinks this, but this is, this is cold hard fact, that uh, John chapter 3 is the most famous chapter in the whole Bible, which I'm not sure about. But I know why he says it, right? He says it because it's John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world. So because he thinks that John chapter 3 is the most famous chapter in the whole Bible, he wants to dive more into this Nicodemus character. And and again, nothing wrong with it. And and Eric Avari is fantastic with, with Nicodemus. And what I what I appreciate about this is that it really shows you the struggle, uh, and and the class differences between the Pharisees and eventually the Sadducees. It shows kind of them all dealing with the Romans, and that the teachers of the law were actually very well respected within the communities. But he did latch on to to Nicodemus. Um, the concerning thing that I'm beginning to see develop, though, in the way that Nicodemus is dealing with things and the struggle that he's having, and, and we'll have to see if this comes out, is this kind of postmodern American Christian theology where it will say, well, it's not about religion, it's about relationships, right? Turning religion into this big bad idol when, you know, it actually is about the, the confession of a faith, right? Uh I, I hope that this is not the way that all of this per, is played out. Like, 
you know, organizing in the church and that kind of thing is a, is a terrible and awful thing. And we ought to just kind of go out and do our own thing. But uh, my, my red flags, at least yellow flags are up to be on the lookout for the, it's not about religion. It's about relationships. You know, if, if they turn Jesus into this, you know, going around just, you know, hugging everybody kind of thing. I mean, not that Jesus probably wouldn't have hugged people, but if that's if that's going to be their take on Jesus, that that can start to be a little bit concerning. Uh, and finally, I've already mentioned this once, but uh, the the spirit leading Mary into a bar uh, where she's uh, struggling with intoxication, and Jesus actually kind of swatting her hand away from from the alcohol. I, again, I know why they're <clears throat> doing this, right? Jesus pulling Mary out of the depths of alcoholism and demon possession and almost committing suicide. Uh, so, and, and again, it's one of the most powerful scenes. You know, uh, it'll it'll <laughs> cause tears to flow down your face, even. But the these are the important encounters where, uh, personally, I believe the scriptures are enough. Right? There are encounters that we can see throughout the scriptures. Think about the, the Syrophoenician woman who is asking Jesus even for the crumbs that fall from the table. I mean, those scenes are enough to kind of kind of make episodes out of. And I hope that we see some of those, even with Mary, right? The scriptures tell us that Jesus cast out seven demons from her. So to have her kind of hanging out in a bar and, and all of this, it, it, again, it's feeding into the postmodern uh, Christian kind of stereotype. But all of that said, wow, uh, it, it, it was it was really enjoyable. You know, most Bible shows and movies are honestly trash, but uh, this one at least attempted to be faithful, and and it and it was. And where there were questions, it at least explained why those decisions were made, even if even if you don't agree. So I'll uh, I'll continue to watch, and I hope that you do too. Uh, next time, I'll likely be looking at uh, at episodes two and three. I will post uh, the link to those live streams down below. So check out episode two and three if you want to watch the discussion before and after. By all means, do that. I'm not going to get into any of that. I'll just get into the episode as it is. See you soon.